Okay, guys, in this video, I will discuss about the beauty of roof truss. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so at the very first, you know that to construct any type of roof, a beam is a mandatory. Okay, but beam has some limitation. Yes, for example, if the span of the beam is very large, in that case, the depth of this section is very high. Why? Because you know that due to any type of loading, the bending moment is simply proportional with the span. Now, if the span is high, definitely the bending moment will also be high. And if you have constant, let's say you are going to use some wide flank section. Okay. So, now let's say the flange have some constant value for carrying the tensile force as well as the compressive force. Okay. And you know that bending moment is nothing but a push and a pull. So, for this constant value of tension or compression, if you have large amount of bending moment, what you have to do? You have to simply increase the lever arm. Okay. So, for larger span, this depth requirement become very high. Clear? And whenever you are going to use the very high depth wave or the wave become quite slender. In this case, the depth is very high compared to the thickness. So, your wave become quite slender. And in that case, this wave become susceptible to wave buckling like this. I think you have watched my video, what is wave buckling? And you also know to resist this type of wave buckling, you have to use the stiffener like this. Okay. And not only that, let's say you have two high depth beam. Okay. And they are subjected to loading. And if the depth is too much, in that case, this beam is susceptible to lateral torsional buckling. And for that, what you have to do? You have to simply restrain them diagonally by using some extra member. Okay. So, all these are the limitation of beam. So, if you have large span, in that case, you need a large depth beam. Okay. And once you are using large depth beam, the wave becomes susceptible to buckling. Okay. And to resist that, what you have to do? You have to use the stiffener and also to make the overall section stabilized against the lateral torsional buckling, you may have to use the cross member. Okay. So, all these are the limitation of beam in case of a large span. Okay. Now, the question is, why do I find root truss beautiful? Okay. So, before discussing that, one more thing, you know that for any eye section, whenever you are using it as a beam, under bending moment, the stress distribution is like this. I know these are very familiar to you, but still just for the discussion, again, repeat it. Okay. So, these are the stress distribution, right? And here you can see that the majority of the stresses are accumulated in the flange region. And that is the reason we consider that the bending moment are carried by the flanges only. Okay. So, here you can see that the material in those region, in those region are not at all utilized under bending moment. So, we can say that a beam section, okay, or you can say some I section, okay, which is subjected to bending moment, okay, is not utilized 100%. Why? just because of this type of stress distribution. Okay, so the beam section is not at all economical whenever this depth become very high because if the depth is high, the wastage of material is more high. Okay, so now come to the root truss. Okay, so here you can see that let's say this is the support and this is the support and we have some bending loading like this. Okay. So, what is the bending moment diagram? Very simple. It is something like this. Okay. Now, consider some bending moment in this zone. Okay. So, let us say here the bending moment is M. 
and due to this bending moment let's say we have some tensile force like this okay so this is the compression and this is the tension right so if we have fixed value of tension and compression okay so let's say to carry this amount of compression or tension we are using some section like this okay so let's say this is the section which can carry only this much amount of compression as well as the tension so here you can see that from this point from support to this mid span the bending moment is constantly increasing so what you have to do if you are maintaining constant tension and compression value you also have to increase this lever arm towards this center okay so here you can see that at this support this is the lever arm let's say d1 but once you are approaching the center the center the center you are increasing the bending moment value very clear that is why you are increasing this lever arm too you are increasing this you are increasing and here this is maximum very simply very very simply okay so here we have used constant value of compression and tensile value and we have played with the lever arm okay and you also know that the bending moment any type of bending moment is converted into a push and a pull so here all this compression is being taken by these members okay axially correct and all the tensions are being taken by these members and they are also acting axially okay now if you have a member like this okay which is subjected to axial loading like this what is the stress distribution very simple the stress distribution is like this it is uniform throughout this cross section and here you can say that all the materials are being utilized uniformly unlike the i section okay so here the material utilization is more efficient thus the structure become more economical okay so i think now it is clear to you how we can substitute any type of i section okay with this truss okay so whenever the span especially for this type of industrial shed the span is definitely should be high and in that case you may not stabilize your structure by using this i section or built up section in that case my suggestion is please go for selecting truss okay and by using the truss definitely you will save much more money clear now the question is well i have successfully transfer all the bending moment and what about the shear force well now let's say this is the beam and this is the loading and this was your bending moment diagram and you have successfully transferred the bending moment through this top cord and the bottom cord now you also have some amount of shear force because this is the shear force diagram okay so at any section at any point you have some magnitude of shear force okay so how you are going to carry this shear force by using the truss in case of an i section you know that to carry the shear force we use the web because the shear force distribution so looks something like this okay so in case of an i section or built up section we had the web to carry this shear force we have already used the top cord to carry the compressive force coming from the bending moment and the bottom cord to carry the tensile force coming from the bending moment okay now who is going to carry the shear force okay so here let's say we are considering this point and in this point we have some magnitude of shear force okay so this is the reaction force at support right and if we cut this section here we will have some amount of resultant shear force 
Now the question is who is going to carry this shear force? Okay, so this is horizontal. Okay, and definitely it will not have any vertical component because all the forces are acting axially. So this bottom cord cannot carry any shear force, right? Now about this top cord, yes, it is a quite slant with respect to this horizon. So we can say it will have some amount of uh, horizontal force as well as the vertical force. But this amount of vertical force is not sufficient to carry this large amount of shear force. So what you have to do? You have to simply use some diagonal member like this. Okay. So these diagonal members are dedicatedly provided to carry the shear force because any diagonal member will have two force component because all the forces are acting axially. So it will have some horizontal component and the vertical component. So this vertical component is opposing this shear force. Right? So that's all I love about the group thrust. And if you also love this video, please don't forget to share it.